Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and this is Rightron Part 3. If you guys have not already seen Parts 1 and 2, I highly suggest you watch those first because we'll be starting today's video right where we left off on Part 2. Also, to be completely transparent, we will not be completing Rytron in this video, but we will be getting very close. But more on that at the end. So with all that being said, without any further ado, let's get started. So to continue, the first thing I want to do is construct the side protector plates, or wheel fenders if you will. To do this, I'm going to cut out two inch square pieces of plastic to add onto the side pieces we already have. Then cut out four triangular pieces, two for each side, that match the pattern of the front of the robot. And lastly, the side plates themselves. That will leave us with an inch wide gap, which should be more than enough room since I'm only planning on using half inch wide wheels. Of course, the wheel hubs will be a little wider. So now I'm going to go ahead and screw this all together, screwing from the inside out, except of course for the two outer plates, which I'll secure from the outside in. We do that of course, so when we need to access the wheels, we'll just have to unscrew the side plates instead of having to take apart the whole robot. Whoops, I just realized I had this grabber head on it the whole time. You're not supposed to know about this yet. Forget about it. I'm going to talk about it in a minute, and when I do, you better act surprised. <laughs> So with the wheel guards now mounted, it's time to cut out the front wedge plate. I'll be cutting the front plate out of this steel sheet. Unfortunately, I don't remember what kind of steel it is because it's been a while since I bought it. But I got it at Lowe's. It's relatively thick and it's the heaviest I can afford, as far as weight goes anyway, so we'll make it work. I have the metal cutting blade already on the table saw, so let the sparks fly. There we go, that looks pretty good. I mean, this burn mark makes it look like it's not square, but it is. So now I'm going to go ahead and drill several small holes into the front plate so that we can mount it onto the robot. This is hardened steel, so it might take a minute, but that's okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and mount this onto the front of the robot, making sure I mount it as flush as possible with the ground. I fully realize that after we add the wheels, it'll pick up the robot a little bit and this will no longer be flush with the ground, but that's okay because I have plans to add a small plastic edge. There we go. With that complete, it's time to move on and start making arguably the most important part of Rytron, the grabber head. Here is a grabber head design I've been working on that you've never seen before. You better be acting surprised. You're supposed to slide it onto the lifter nub, securing it in place with four screws, two on the top and one on each side. That way you'll be on there nice and snug and you'll be left with two half inch fangs perfect for grabbing. But sadly, we can't actually use this head because it has zero grip and zero flex. If it doesn't have any grip, it of course can't hold on to other robots, which is bad. And if it can't bend or flex at all, you could destroy the servo, which is also bad. Because if the servo tries to clamp down on something hard that won't give, like a metal robot, you'll put a lot of strain on the motor, which could potentially blow it out. So what we need to do is design and build a head that can flex and bend a little bit and also has some solid grip. After thinking about it for a little while, I've decided to take a 5 by 2 inch piece of rubber, I got it from this $2 baseboard, and two identical 2 by 3 quarter inch HDPE blocks. They're of course a half inch thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten the rubber onto the front of the HDPE blocks. Then loop the rubber around and screw it onto the back of the blocks. I say back of the blocks, but I'm probably going to mount mine more towards the middle. Perfect. Now we'll just mount this onto the front of the arm. I'm going to mount mine at a slight angle. Then we'll just wrap the outside of the rubber with a little bit of gripping tape. 
There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to wait a little while to see how well this rubber holds up, but I may very well end up inserting a piece of foam in here to help it keep its shape. With that, the main body of the robot is now complete, but here comes the big question. Can it self-right? Absolutely not, doesn't even come close. But all we have to do to fix that, believe it or not, is add on this little tiny T-bar onto the back of the lifting arm. Just like that. With this design, it's impossible for it to get stuck on its side, on its back, and as soon as I add that front edge, on its top. I mean, on its top. So basically, no matter which way you try to flip it over, it'll always land on the T. Then all you have to do is open up the grabbing arm just a little bit to make the weight shift to the back of the robot, then it'll rock back to its bottom. I am loving how this has turned out so far, and I can't wait to see it in action. And that is actually where I'm going to end part three. I deeply apologize that I can't give this a test drive or anything just yet as I'm still waiting on some parts, but stick around because part four will have it all. No, I'm not 100% sure when part four will come out because like I said, I'm waiting on some parts, but stay tuned because it will be juicy. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord going, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.